In this video, I'm going to show you 10 of my favorite time saving devices when working with Camtasia. If you're an intermediate user and you're looking to push your skills, then this video is really going to help you because it's going to help you to understand quicker ways of working. I've been working with Camtasia since Camtasia 6, probably something like 15, 16 years ago now, and I am actually a recommended trainer for Camtasia. Really hope you like the video and as if you do, please like it, please share it, please comment on it. I'd love to know if you've got any other tricks that you use to save time. And of course, join me on my YouTube channel. Let's get started. Just before I start with the first trick, if you don't know Camtasia that well and you want to learn more about the Camtasia as a general tool, there's an introductory video on the screen now that you can click on. Otherwise, we're going to start with trick number one. The first time saving feature I'm going to show you is to learn to group things together. So for example, if you created, uh, as I've done here, a video and it's already got a nice introduction and I know I won't be editing that introduction anymore, what I can do is simply hold my mouse down, select all of those objects and then group them together. And that means it's just one object now. And I don't need to worry about that because I know I'm not concentrating on that part. So it really helps to group things so that you've basically got them all in one simple file and you haven't got to keep working on all the different files. Uh, it really does save time. You can click and also ungroup as well to put them back. So I often group things when I'm working. You know, I'm working for a part and I think, right, okay, this part here, um, you know, I need to I need to add something at the end. So I'm just going to group that part together there. So I just select the things that I want to group together, right click and group them together. And now I can perhaps even move that out of the way and get on with something else and then put it back in again afterwards. It can save me a lot of time and makes work working uh, on the timeline much easier. This next time saving device or method is one that I use all the time, every single video I use. Now look, if we play this video through, and it's quite a long video, it's about 11, 12 minutes, you'll see that there's no highlighted cursor in any part of it. And what I'm gonna do is simply just right click here and click on the button that says, select all media on the track. It selects everything. Now I'm going to come down to the cursor, choose the cursor, and drag that cursor onto the bottom line. And you'll see that it adds the cursor to all of the videos, all at the same time. All of them have been instantly updated. And I can come over here now as well and just change the opacity down to 60%. Great way of working, click off the screen, or click in an empty space afterwards to deselect it. So really simple, right click and choose the option of select all media on track and then you can add content specifically to all the media on all the tracks at the same time. Works particularly well with the cursor. Another time saving trick that can be really good is if you don't want to work with a particular channel, lock it. And what you can do is you can come down here and very quickly lock a channel. And if you lock a channel, that means nothing on that channel can be edited or changed. And that can be really important, for example, when you've got, say, another few layers that you're working with and you want to make sure that you don't touch anything in that bottom channel in that bottom layer so you can just click on this button here and lock it and I find that really helps me so say for example I'm working on this initial part here and I don't want to touch this so I simply lock that channel and then I can edit all the other objects on that uh, part of the video, but I can't edit this last part because it's on a channel that's been locked. So we'll always look at the assets that are on a particular channel, and then you might think, right, I'm gonna lock that channel. Uh, for example, here, I might think, I only wanna work on this, so I'm gonna lock this channel, and I'm gonna lock this channel, because I only wanna work with this, I don't wanna be able to change this at all. And that way, you can really focus in on exactly what you want to edit. Now, while we're talking about tracks or channels, I sometimes call them channels, but obviously that in Camtasia, they're really called tracks. This is another lovely, lovely feature. Watch this. I'm going to lock this channel or this track, and I'm going to lock this track because I want to actually edit this audio here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is move my timeline here and zoom right in. And this is going to allow me now to do the editing that I want to do. But did you realize that you can do this? If you come over to that track, right click, 
you can actually maximize track and this really gives you a lot of control if you want to be working with the audio particularly if you want to reduce it or add audio points etc it really does give you the opportunity to get right in close to the channel and begin to do your editing work so i often use this as a way let's say for example i want to reduce the the volume or i want to add in an, a, a an audio point okay and then perhaps another one here it's so much easier to do this when i've expanded the channel or expanded the track sorry so that i can see it really really clearly so i often do this and then i can start working now with the audio points and making whatever changes i want to make etc i'm going to undo that as i don't need to make those changes again you can always come back to the track and then you can minimize the track and bring it back to normal size often that happens when you move it back to more normal then you just have to kind of pull it out notice you can also just do it this way okay so you can maximize a track by simply moving to it and making it bigger or smaller but it helps me to work faster uh, particularly when i'm working on really accurate accurate ways of um, or editing the audio Okay, another really useful thing to learn is to actually name your tracks and you can do that easy by just right click clicking, sorry, and clicking on rename track. Now I've got this track here called Callouts and if we look at it, there's a call out here, there's another one that comes on the screen here, there's another one that comes on the screen here and there's another one that comes on the screen here. Now what I can also do is this, watch this, I'm gonna, I can do it again two ways. I can right click here and click again on select all media on the track. And now what I can do is I can come down to behaviors, I can choose the behavior and I'm gonna do slide. I'm gonna drag that and notice again, it's applied to all four objects at the same time. So now these slide on the screen and then stay. Now I'm gonna show you another little trick that I do here. I'm also gonna click now on during, and I don't like the animations during. I want the animation at the beginning, nothing on when it's on the screen, just want it to be solid and clear, and then nothing at the end. So just changing it to during, I'm gonna click on and choose none. And now what's going to happen if we just play one of these animations very quickly, you'll see that the animation Cheated starts. Speakers. The final website I'm going to recommend, it comes onto the screen. It doesn't and flash on and on called because I turned it off during, so there's no animation. O project, it was shortlisted for the British Council Elton's Awards and it deals with the topic of modern day slavery and obviously it helped. Okay, so you can see how I can again by just selecting the objects apply for example a behavior to all of the objects and this is really important if you're going to do this to make sure that you'd name a certain channel to do certain things like you might have audio, you might have main video, you might have for example webcam video, you might have call outs etc. This can work really well again to speed up the process of your editing. One of the most useful features of Camtasia 2021 is the library. The library is so useful to us because it's got all this different content that's available. And if we look here, we've got icons and intros and lower thirds and motion backgrounds and music tracks and outros. I'm going to use an intro as an outro because I actually like a particular one I use all the time. I'm just going to show you how quickly we can do this. I'm going to take this here. So these are predefined animations. I'm going to drop that drop straight onto the screen. And I'm just going to kind of uh, log coming a bit closer onto this. I can really see it well. Okay, and let's just play this animation a bit so you just see what happens at the end of the video. So we just get that coming on and then I'm going to write, for example, goodbye. Now at the moment it says Camtasia, TechSmith Camtasia. But in fact, if you come up to here and just click on the title here, and I'm just going to put, put that to goodbye. Okay, so I'm going to write goodbye and then I'm going to press enter. So the updates and now simply have a completely new animation at the end comes on the screen, opens up and says goodbye. Now, if you want to learn more about intros and outros, there's a video on the screen now that you can click on to learn more. 
Just a super quick bit of promo. If you do like this video on Camtasia and you want more videos, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Click on screen capture and there's plenty of videos there on using Camtasia. And of course, the other thing you can do is uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and there are literally hundreds of videos about using Camtasia on my YouTube channel as well as some interesting playlists. Okay, my next trick's quite an advanced one, but it's one again where we can use the library assets to really save us a lot of time. If you look here, I've got some, some green screen video recorded, and what I need to do is to change this setting so that the green is deleted from the image. That's how you do green screen. You film yourself using green screen, and then you delete the color green so that there's no green, there's nothing behind you, and then you add in a background. If you wanna learn how to do this in detail, there's a video on the screen now that's gonna show you exactly what to do. But what I'm gonna do is just very quickly take you through the technique. So watch this, and this is gonna show you a great time saving device. I'm gonna come down here and click on visual effects. I'm gonna choose remove color. So I drag that onto the screen here and then say, well, what color do I wanna remove? Well, I wanna remove this color. So now the color's been removed, but we haven't got a background. Now we can actually just change the tolerance slightly if we feel we need to do that. And I'm just gonna increase it there to 14%. You can see it's really nice now. We've got a dark background, but I need to now add in a background. So what I'm gonna do now is come again to my library. And one of the things that we've got is what we call motion backgrounds. And I'm just gonna drag in a motion background. Let's just choose one that I really like. There's quite a lot of these now. I'm gonna choose this one here called Flying app so I'm going to just drag that onto the screen and put it underneath that video so now what happens is and I may need to kind of uh, put it on twice if it's not uh, long enough let me just show you the video goes on just slightly longer so I can bring it on a second time so I'm just going to put the same up on and just bring that down and make it a lot shorter there we are and now we've got a lovely video effect with me on the screen and with some flying apps behind me if you're a language teacher or a language student are looking for ideas on how to develop it's a really nice effect is one that I often use and as you can see because we've got these library assets like motion backgrounds we can do this really really quickly another really common mistake that I see people make and I'm gonna just lock this track to show this in fact I'll lock this track and lock this track here we've got a track at the bottom here that's got both audio and uh, imagery on it, it's a screen capture. Now it's really hard to edit the audio here. And what we can do actually is we can right click and we can separate the video and the audio. And you'll see now it creates two tracks and suddenly the audio is now available to edit. So when you're doing screen capture, it's a really good idea sometimes if you want to work with the audio, and now we can obviously come right in close to the audio and work exactly with it. Let's say, for example, we want to cut this little bit out here. Let's imagine that we want to cut that out. Then what we can do is lock the track below, and all we're going to do here is, in fact, pull this out so that we completely cover that part of the audio, right-click, and then click on this one, Ripple Delete. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut that out and then connect the two outside passes pits together and suddenly that piece of audio is completely gone i'm going to show you that one more time let's say i want to cut this part of the audio out completely what i can do is again make sure that i've got the other uh, channels or tracks locked pull the beginning and the end so that you've got the area marked that you want to delete right click and click on ripple delete and suddenly that whole piece of audio will be cut from the track ripple delete is very very useful as well as the idea of separating the audio and the video okay in this next part i'm going to add an intro at the beginning but i'm also going to add some audio and i'm going to show you a couple of great tricks with the audio now to make this easy to do what i've done there and i'll just quickly show you i'll ungroup it is that this is actually quite complicated i'm going to select the whole of the animation or the whole of the video so far i'm going to right click and group that all together so i've just got it as one object and i don't need to worry about it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add an intro to this big video that i've got here so i'm going to come over to my library 
assets and I'm going to click on intros and I'm going to drag this intro onto the screen. Now if I quickly play this intro to you, you'll see that it's a very simple one and it just has a bit of language there. And what I'm going to do with that, very simple, is come over to this button here and change that and delete that. I'm going to put my name. So I'm going to write Russell Stannard. So now I've got a nice, hopefully, press the enter button to change it and update it. Let's just go back again. And let me just make sure that I have got that actually selected right. In fact, what I'm going to do is going to come in a little bit closer. Just make sure that really is right up close. So let's just play that a minute. So now looking really good. I've got this great animation. It's taken me no time at all. I want some music to go along with this. So what I'm going to do now is come down to the music options that I've got. And again, this is in the library. So I'm going to choose a track. I've got lots of tracks that I can choose. And I'm going to use this one here, Firefly. Now, if you want to check your tracks, you just double click on them and they'll play. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag that track on underneath. Now, straight away, you see that the track is too long. I want the music to end here. So I come to the end of the animation, select the music track and then cut it. So what I'm going to do here is just simply cut the track, click on this part of the track and delete it. So now we've got this great intro music along with the animation. Let's just play that. But there's one problem. The music doesn't fade. It plays right through and then kind of jumps out. So what we need to do then is come down to one of our another really good time saving device. Click on more. Click on audio effects. And simply what you want is fade out. Just drag that on to the end of where that audio is and immediately it will fade out for you. Now here we can use our little trick of maximizing the track or minimizing the track. In this case, we want to maximize it. And I just want to move that out a little bit. I want it to fade a little bit later. And now what I need to do, just one final thing, is to bring back the rest of the video. Here it is. So I'm just going to drag that video back. Just drag that right back into place so that that video is also on now. I can now make that channel a bit smaller again. No need for that. Let's just have a quick look at how this now works. This is a fantastic, so lovely way of fading out the music without having to muck around with the audio points by simply using the fade out. I don't tend to use the fade in, but I make a lot of use of the fade out. Really hope you liked that video. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free content and you can see all of my courses on the opening page. Don't forget to sign up to the newsletter. That way you get updated with all the latest blog posts, the webinars, the latest videos and the courses. Of course, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click on the bell. Uh, that way you'll get all the updates. And finally, if you do want to contact me, perhaps about doing a conference or doing some training with your organization, you can contact me from the website. Thank you very much. On the screen now, you're going to find some more videos about using Camtasia that you might find useful.